You probably know that most of our phones are constantly connected to cell towers, and as long as we can make calls and use the internet, we never think much of it. When we move, our phone automatically connects to the next tower in the blink of an eye, and that happens thousands of times in a day. But what if one of those towers you connected to was a fake, built not to give you service, but to expose your location? Well, that's exactly what's happening in the United States, where the government has started using similar technology to track people and in some cases even following immigrants around the city. Following. Keep following. Immigration has always been part of the American story, but over the last decade it's turned into one of its biggest political battles. Dozens of criminal illegal migrants. Legal immigrants. Illegal immigrants. Undocumented immigrants with criminal records. Suddenly, ordinary families, workers, and longtime residents became pawns in a political pissing contest. Things escalated when Donald Trump began tightening immigration rules, from travel bans to aggressive deportation sweeps in cities. During his campaign, Trump even claimed that undocumented immigrants were eating people's pets. They're eating the pets of the people that live there. There was no evidence behind it, but the clip was shared across news cycles and social media, feeding the idea that enforcement needed to go even further. And it's exactly that kind of rhetoric that helped clear the path for stronger surveillance and tracking methods. While most of the attention was focused on the wall, other measures were quietly taking shape behind the scenes. Instead of relying only on border patrols, immigration enforcement started turning to data. Over the past several years, ICE or United States Immigration and Customs Enforcement has expanded its use of digital tools. Documents obtained by the ACLU show that ICE has access to billions of data points including addresses, phone records and utility bills. They also have a contract with Vigilant Solutions, a private database that collects license plate scans from toll booths, allowing ICE to track where someone's car has been over time. All of this means that ICE can build detailed profiles without needing a traditional warrant or access to telecom providers. But the digital records are just one side of the story. To find people more effectively, ICE also relies on hardware tools. One of those tools is something called a Stingray. It's a device that imitates a normal cell tower, tricking nearby phones into connecting to it. First developed by Harris Corporation, the Stingray was originally for military and intelligence use, and by the early 2000s, it was already used by the FBI and US Marshals for counterterrorism and organized crime cases. Today, the term Stingray has become shorthand for a family of devices, all built to intercept phone signals in real time. According to public records, ICE has used this technology hundreds of times since at least 2017. It's also been found that ICE and the Secret Service haven't always followed proper authorization rules, and have used Stingrays at for example protests and large public events, sweeping up data from thousands of bystanders in the process. A recent Forbes investigation revealed that, despite years of criticism over its use of stingrays, ICE is still deploying them today. The agency obtained a federal warrant in Utah to track an immigrant's phone, following the signal for more than 30 blocks. In this case, the suspect was a convicted murderer and a suspected gang member, but with all the controversy around the technology, it's not hard to imagine it being used for much vaguer reasons. In a similar manner to hackers exploiting Wi-Fi hotspots, the Stingray works by exploiting a basic function in how phones connect to networks. Your phone is always searching for the strongest signal around, switching towers automatically to keep your calls and data stable as you move from place to place. A Stingray pretends to be one of those regular towers, but it boosts its signal just enough to become the strongest one in range. When that happens, every phone nearby connects to it automatically, once the connection is made, the device can capture each phone's unique ID number and measure how strong the signal is, letting operators estimate the phone's location. They can then repeat the process from different spots to narrow down exactly where someone is. The problem is that the Stingray doesn't just see one phone, it collects data from every device nearby, even if none of those people are under investigation. Some models can also disrupt normal service, sometimes blocking calls or data while they're active. And maybe in the future they can hijack your user to subscribe and leave a like for a small up-and-coming YouTube channel.
But in reality, what does all of this mean for all of us? There have been talks of Android 16 introducing warnings when your phone connects to a fake tower. It's a sign that even tech companies see how these tools can affect regular people's privacy. The same technology designed to track criminals still collects data from everyone in range. And because much of the use remains a secret, it's hard to know exactly when or where you might be under one of those simulated towers. These tools built for one group often become tools for many, just like what happened with Reality Winner and the printer tracking dots. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and as always, thanks for your time, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.